Hey everyone. So Sabrina had a question about um, bringing her line work section into Photoshop and how to texture it to make it look a little bit more lively. So I just wanted to do a quick demo showing how we can uh, really quickly bring in some silhouettes to Photoshop and begin livening up our sections. So I have a PDF export of the line work from Sabrina and I'm just going to drag it into my Photoshop. So the line work comes in here and uh, we have just a white background. Um, if yours doesn't come in, if it just shows up like this, then you can always add a layer by going down here and adding a layer and then going over here to these three extra dots at the bottom of the page and selecting the paint bucket tool here. And then just make sure you have white selected and you can make a fill layer yourself. So we have the line work and this rectangle here is indicative of a tree. It's the scale of the tree before it begins branching out into a canopy. So I thought I would show you guys how you can bring in some of the photo assets that you have and use them in a section. The first thing I'm gonna do is just navigate to my graphic assets folder. I'm gonna to go to my people and I'm gonna select a couple people who um, I'd like to place in my drawing. And I'm gonna to try to select people that are relatively straight on in, in elevation. So maybe I'll grab these guys. It doesn't really matter um, what they look like or what their coloring is because what we're gonna do is turn them into silhouettes in Photoshop. I don't know the exact scale that people are meant to be in this drawing, but uh, based on the size of the steps, I think this around here probably makes sense. Um, usually when we have seating elements in the public realm, they're about 45 to 50 centimeters high, which is also conveniently a, a pretty good rule of thumb for the distance between your feet and your knees. So if you need to quickly scale somebody and you didn't put in a scale figure, you can always kind of use those rules of thumb. I'm going to place them just down here on the path, the lower path. And now I'm going to rename the layer couple one and I'm going to double click on the layer and that's going to bring up my layer styles palette. In layer styles we can apply um, overlays and transformations to layers that are non-destructive so that means we can turn them on and off if we don't want them and I'm going to do a color overlay. So I've just clicked on color overlay and, un and checked it off and then if I click on color overlay it's going to give me more options here. So I'm going to just make sure that this is set to black. You can choose any color you want. Maybe you want them to be dark gray or maybe you want them to stand out and you wanna give them like a really bright color. Um, but for me, I'm just gonna keep them down here at black and make sure your blend mode is on normal and 100% here and click okay. And you see that now there's like a few little comments below this layer that says effects and color overlay. If you want to turn off the color overlay, you can just uncheck this eyeball and you can see what the normal um, layer looks like. Another thing you can do is copy and paste layer effects. So let's say you have an effect that you really like. I'm going to make these people maybe 45% uh, transparent so that they're a little bit uh, lighter. And I like the way that that looks, so I can just right click and go copy layer style and then I can select the other two people layers that I have right click and go paste layer style and now all of them have the same layer style so I'll call this couple two and this couple three and now I can go ahead and scale these people according to the site maybe there is like a fancy garden party going on and these people are part of it. Um, if you have people that don't quite meet the ground plane, you can use your selection tool. So I'm going to use the rectangular marquee to just carefully select this guy. And as soon as he's selected, I can just use my arrow, or sorry, I have to be on the selection tool, go on the selection tool. And now I can use my arrow to move him independently of the lady. So I'm just going to move him down so his feet are on the ground. So now we have a couple silhouette people in here, um, but what about trees? We can basically use the same method that we used with people. 
So I'm going to go back to my trees folder and I'm going to drag in a couple trees to use as references. Now normally if I was using um, these trees in a visualization or um, a colored illustration, I would want to make sure that their tones were very similar. But if I'm just going to use them for a textural background quality and maybe desaturate them, then the colors of them don't matter that much. What I am going to do is just drag them up here and create a group by pressing Control G. It's going to create a little folder and I'll call those trees. And I'll do the same thing for these people. Just select them all, Control G, and call it people. So we keep all our layers organized. And I'll name them tree one. If I just turn off those other two layers and focus on this one tree. There's a few things I could do to uh, change the saturation. The first thing I could do is just desaturate it. And I use a shortcut shift control U. And that's going to take away all of the color on this tree. And now I could just change the opacity if I want. Maybe I want it to fade back a little bit. And I could use control T to transform this and set it approximately where it's meant to be in the section, like this. Another thing I could do, and I'm just gonna control Z to undo all of that, is use another shortcut, control alt U. And that's gonna bring up the hue saturation palette here. And in this, you can choose the saturation level yourself. So if you wanted it to be partially desaturated but not fully desaturated, you could do that. So maybe you want it just almost fully desaturated, but not quite. You still want a little bit of the green coming through. You could do that. Another thing you could do is if you check off colorize, then you can change the color of the tree itself. So if you wanted to change the entire color of the tree, you could do that. Um, let's say you were trying to emphasize a certain planting or a certain uh, person or activity, you could give it a color overlay like this, and that way it doesn't turn it into a silhouette, actually just overlays the color on the texture. But I'm going to show you a difference here. So if I do a color overlay on this tree, I can't get back to the original color of the tree. So this is a permanent alteration. Whereas if I do a color overlay by double clicking and going into the layer styles, and I go to color overlay, um, and I choose a pink color here, maybe like that, I can change the blend mode here, maybe to multiply or to screen or to overlay or color. And I can change the transparency here. So I can control this um, in, an, in the layer styles palette. And I can then turn that off and get back to the original color if I decide later that I don't want to have a color overlay. So just keep in mind that there are destructive and non-destructive ways of working in Photoshop and that if you are ever wondering which way you should go, I usually go with the non-destructive way because you never know when you're going to want to take off that highlight color and return it back to its original um, saturation and color. For the purposes of this uh, illustration, I'm going to, I, I think that I'm not going to need um, the fully saturated versions of these trees anymore. So I'm going to do Control Alt U and I'm going to uncheck colorize and I'm just going to desaturate this to about minus 75% or so and hit OK. And I'll do the same thing with these trees down here. Control Alt U and it will automatically grab the previous settings that you had. Maybe I want this one a little bit more saturated. And again here. And then I could just change their opacities to uh, indicate where they are in space. So if they're closer to me, I'll want them to be darker and more bold. If they're further away, um, I might want them to be really, really light. So I can resize this tree and set it to the background back here. And I can take this tree and if I wanted it to look even further away, I'll give it an even lighter opacity like that and set it to the background here. So now we have established distance in our drawing. We have the foreground tree, which is close to the section cut line, and then we have more trees in the background. 
And we know in real life, if we were looking at this, that all of these trees would have an equal amount of um, saturation and opacity. But when we're drawing sections and we want to call attention to the section cut line, this is how we can do that by, um, by including a sort of atmospheric distance in our assets. We can do the same thing with these people down here if we want this couple to be the um, closest couple and then this couple to be um, the furthest away then we can change their opacities and indicate how close or far they are to the picture plane just like that so um, you might notice that if you have brought in your drawing and you uh, just had it kind of centered on your page that you might need to move everything down. And that's totally fine. If you want, you can just select everything and just drag it down so that it's situated and uh, composed a little better on the page. So I think that a good rule of thumb is that we wanna be able to see the tops of the trees if possible. If they're really, really large, of course, we're not gonna be able to do that. But in this case, if I just drag all of these layers down on the page, then I have plenty of space. And I think that the composition is better as well. We have about a third of the drawing there and a third of the drawing kind of happening in the middle here. So I think this looks a little better than having it set to the center of the page. We have a fountain here and actually uh, there's a couple lines missing from this water fountain edge. So this is the cut part, but we aren't seeing the elevational information behind. And that is best drawn in either Rhino or Illustrator. So, all right, so if we wanted to add some water to this fountain, we can just add a new layer here. And what I'm going to do is use my um, polygonal lasso to make a selection. So if I know that the water goes to approximately the top of this second step, I can just start my selection there and I'm just using shift to constrain this to a straight line. And I'll, I'll try to um, select just within this water fountain area. I'm not doing a super good job, but um, I can always move this selection around after I've done it. So I can just try to catch uh, the edges that I've missed. And then I'm going to go edit, fill, and I can select a color. And so I'm just gonna select a light blue color like that and hit okay. And now you can see it fills my selection with that color. I'll do a control D to deselect. But it's going over top of our section. So um, in this case, we can just make a selection here where the line work and the color intersect and just delete it from the layer. We're not gonna need that information again because the section is always going to break up the water. So um, I'm not gonna bother with a layer mask in this scenario. Another thing I would suggest you do is when you have color fills like this and they may go over top of your line work, you can just set them to multiply and that way um, you can see the line work below without having to adjust any of your layers. So I'm just gonna move that down a little bit. Um, if you wanna get really precise, you can always click on your line work and use your magic wand to select inside the lines and then erase anything that is overlapping from your uh, fill layer. Um, okay, so that's water. But uh, Sabrina was mentioning how there's a fountain here and the water actually comes out of this uh, piece of concrete. Um, so we could use a brush to illustrate that. And I'm gonna just stay on the same layer called uh, water. And I'm gonna press B for brush. And I'm going to look for a brush in my brush palette. You may or may not have these brushes. I can't remember if I gave them to you, but if you can't find a brush that you want, um, you can always do a Google search for it. Uh, most of these are free brushes that I found online. So I'm just gonna look for a set of brushes that I know I have that have to do with water. Okay, I'm getting there. So I have drops, I have rain, I have ripples, um, I have a splash, and I'm looking for these ones. So this is, um, this is called waterfalls. So I don't know if you have this brush in your set, but um, this is the one I'm gonna use. And I'm just going to select uh, the same color as I have for my water here. I'm gonna reduce the size a little bit. Um, if you find you can't see your brush, just check if you have caps lock set on. 
Um, it should give you a preview, but if you can't see it, your caps lock might be on like mine just was. And I'm gonna increase the brush using the uh, right parentheses. And then I'm just going to put in a little flow of water coming from the middle of that block as if the water is flowing down from it. Now, Sabrina is missing a couple background lines here. Um, what I'm gonna do as a cheat is just uh, cut out some lines from this tree indicator. I can just control J that selection. So now I have some lines back here and I'm gonna use um, transform to get them up to the right size. And now we see there's uh, there should be a background edge that we see for this line work. Now that's a really hacky way of doing this. I wouldn't suggest you do your line work this way in Photoshop, but um, just for the sake of time and because I don't have the original file, I'm just gonna do it that way. And then with this, uh, we wanna get rid of this tree indicator line, which is like just for showing the scale of the trunk. And I'm just gonna make a selection and get it as close to the cut line as I can and then just delete it from the layer mask. So now we have um, our water, we have people, we have trees, and that's pretty good for a basic section. The last thing I would say in this section is that we should keep in mind that when we're cutting through our sites, the thickest line is the ground line. Now, right now, Sabrina has the thickest line going along the outside edge of all of this material. And I understand why she would be inclined to do that. But the thickest line is actually this one where the ground begins to meet the material. So if you um, are ever wondering where your thickest line should be, just look at where you have drawn in materials and wherever they're touching the ground, that's where the, the thickest section cut line should be. So if I was Sabrina, I would um, revise this so that I have my thick line going down here. And I would probably just do this by drawing an even thicker line than what's being shown in her current section cut line. So I would just double the size and do my ground section cut line here. And then that way the rest of the line work will take a little bit of a backseat to that. But this is a really fast and basic way that you can use existing assets that you have in your CAD graphics folder or even on the Moreau board where you have the cutout share area. And you can begin to populate and illustrate your sections just using very basic tools in Photoshop.